Hello everyone, my name is Putty, and welcome to Lucha Mania! 14. I am joined, as always, for a show that is definitely going two and a half hours. <laughs> by Tucker Davidson. Welcome to the show. Hello. How are you feeling Thank today? I know you, you haven't... don't have to welcome me. I live here. So, you didn't book any of this show. I booked one thing. I hope you know what's going on. I do, for the most part, yes. Good. I'm glad. I have been paying attention. We have a lot of show to get through today. Yeah, we should probably just do it. Probably. Let's Stop go. Stop pussyfooting around. Let's go. So tonight... In front of 71,000 people in Cancun. That's up. It is. We are hosted by Doc Minnesota, returning from his long-term injury. He's not quite fit enough to get in the ring, but he will host the show tonight. And he promises the crowd that this will be the best Lucha Mania they have ever seen. Because tonight, in the main event of the evening, Lucha Libre legend, the immortal Champagne Lover, for his first Lucha Mania in 10 years, is defending the World's Heavyweight Championship against the Batalla Real winner, El Pud. And the Golden Luchador, arguably Champagne Lover's eternal rival. It is Lucha Libre Capitalism versus Lucha Libre Socialism multi millonario in a triple threat. And remember, in Lucha Libre, triple threats are one fall to a finish. Falls count anywhere. Tucker, are you ready for that main event? I mean, yeah, but I mean, I'm more excited for the television title match myself. Go ahead. Doc introduces it. Selfish reasons. What is tonight? The return of the peacemaker. Well, he's been back. <laughs> well, no, it's a return. It's okay. still a return. All right, go ahead. We're still on the return. Uh huh. Anyways, the peacemaker, the television champion of the world, he's come back and he's beaten your mission like immediately for that belt. It was your belt. Your man was keeping it warm for you. That's true. That's true. But somebody has the peacemaker in his scope. The new, the debuting, the technical mastermind, the shooter, Sean Dealey. In the people's main event. The people's main event. <laughs> we move on to Champagne Lover, who comes out and thanks Doc and says, "I always respected you, Doc Minnesota. I always thought that you were a." Uh, why did you become a doctor? <laughs> you were a great wrestler. And I respect that you're here to host and make sure that the millions have a good time tonight. Now. <laughs> Entire crowd's like, uh. <laughs> We have a big show for you tonight. We're scheduled to have to be here for seven hours. We want to make sure that you're entertained. <laughs> so we're announcing a pre-show. And the biggest pre-show in all of sports entertainment. Because the winner of an eight-man Invitational Championship Tournament will be the number one contender to the World's Heavyweight Championship. So tonight you're not only going to find out who's the television champion. You're not only going to find out who the tag team champions are. You're not only going to find out who the trios champions are. And you're not only going to remember that Champagne Lover is always the world's champion. But you're also going to figure out who the number one contender is. Have a good night everybody. I'll see you in the main event for my victory. I'll wow. see you then. He's so lovable. He also loves champagne. He's already drunk. <laughs> oh yeah, he had a bottle, massive, like half empty bottle of champagne. He poured it into a big glass as he came out. And we will kick off that tournament with Kirk Jamison beating High Fly and John Cena <laughs> with a Kirk hold. Kirk hold, baby. <laughs> Kirk hold, baby. Kirk the fuck out of him. La Sombra beats last year's main eventer Gino Montero in another first round match. With two straight falls? Two straight falls, he's out of here! Gino's out of here! Get him out of here! Get him the hell out of here! And then El Midico defeats RPG BBJ. BBK? <laughs> with a Northern Light Suplex. And then El Souk beats Gary El Animador. <laughs> 
flag press. <laughs> also got a rating of 90 in this match. Jesus. Oof. So our yeah. semi-finalists are Kirk Jameson, La Sombra, El Midico, and El Souk. El Souk. And now, Blessed Gold meet backstage. La Peacemaker, belt on his shoulder. And I'll punch just he looks genuinely surprised to see him. He's so focused. He's got a picture of Champagne Lever up on his wall he's been throwing darts at. El Pun is so focused. And he turns and he sees La Peacemaker and he's like, wow, I didn't know you were back. How'd the fight go? Oh, it went good. It went damn good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I see you got a belt. Is that from MMA? <laughs> no, Pun genuinely doesn't recognize the title. <laughs> no, it's the... Uh, uh, never mind, never mind. Uh, yes, it's from MMA. <laughs> <laughs> I see, well... You got, have you got a match tonight? Do you want a ticket? I can get you a ticket. Oh, no, I got uh, I got a, an arrangement to attend to. Oh, well, it's good to hear from you. You should talk to my agent. She can arrange dinner. We should catch up. Have a good night now. Do you need an autograph? Do you want an autograph? Or? You, you, uh, you win your belt first, all right? And then, and then we'll talk about dinner. Oh, glad to see you've been watching the product, buddy. I tap you on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, God knows you have. <laughs> I, I don't watch this crap. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking kidding me? <laughs> we move on to the Amazing Bucks, who cut a Lucha Mania promo. What do they say, Tucker? They immediately start flexing and saying that tonight, uh, the Swamp Monsters, uh... It's not, be... they're not in that match, they're not in that match. What match are they in then? They're what teaming the with Mr. Lucha to defend else? their trio's title against the board of oh. directors. <laughs> uh, them and Mr. Lucha, the supreme team, they're gonna send the people they're wrestling against, I already forgot who the fuck it was. They're the board of directors. directors. The board of directors. They're going to give the board of directors a, a going away party. But it's not going to be any going away party. It's going to be a super kick party. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul Huntington makes his entrance <laughs> for this match. Like, all five, <laughs> all five of the other people in the trios match have made, like, a one-minute entrance. And then the lights go down. And there's green screw lights. <laughs> He's walking out there in a cyborg costume. I say the, the Terminator entrance from that one year. He's got like a, a metallic sledgehammer. He slides into the ring, and the chaos begins as the trio's titles are defended. Also, Jesse's apparently a good good manager for his for her for her husband. That's the board of directors, by the way. I don't think we've ever... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't think we have. <laughs> Do we need to explain this to this trio, or should we move on? I, I think I think it makes enough sense. Okay, cool. Um, oh, yes, so this was the leaders of the factions meeting. Do you want to explain this one? Yeah, so Multimillionario <laughs> is backstage watching TV from a very strange angle, as per usual. And he, you know... He's just like, yes, yes. He's like, good thing I bet on my own teams. We're going to be having big dividends tonight. And then suddenly there's a knock on the door. And Sean Dealey comes in. Who the fuck is this guy? And he looks at Multimillionario and he's like, you're the, uh, you're the golden luchador I've heard so much about. Cool, cool. And you're the one fighting for the, uh, for the world title tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Gonna hit them with the million dollar kata. Right, you you get yourself some gold. I'm already gonna get myself some gold. But I want you to know something. This is uh, I come in peace for now. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Whenever there's somebody at the top, I want you to remember this, and I want you to remember this well. There's always somebody ready to gun them down. Listen here, shoot a shot. Your ammunition costs money. And when you get to the top, you're going to realize one simple fact of this promotion. Everybody's got a price, brother. 
don't cost money if you're dealing with the mafia. They deal in <laughs> organs. Oh, the cartel. Oh no, the cartels. <laughs> Sean, Sean is, the, is the new guy down south. Oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Also, I want to mention at this point that Multimillionario dropped the name of the Golden Cutter. There, this has been an angle on TV over the last couple of uh, over the last couple of weeks, where Millenario has debuted a has new it? move, the Golden Cutter, which is a cutter off the top rope. Every time he hits it, he gives away one million dollars to random people in the audience. Oh my! Yeah. So big it, baby face he is. <laughs> it costs him a million dollars to hit that move. So we might well see it tonight. It, nobody has kicked out of it yet in South of the Border Pro Wrestling, so it could be something that wins him the title tonight. Don't come to Lucha Media tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then Doc Minnesota's walking backstage, and I stop him and I say, Hey Doc! Uh, wait, Joey, right? Joey? Does, 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 does Doc explain why he's now Doc? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Then he'll put this. Listen, me and Shooter Sean, we've been having these conversations over the last few weeks, and I think we just click, man. Like, I love firearms. He loves firearms. And he says that he can make me a, um, what is it? A- amigo del cartel. I don't really know what it means, but, you know, I think, uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be big business. So, listen, we need a little bit of extra firepower. And I remember you when you were friends with that Jamaican fucker, right? Well, that Jamaican fucker who's running around with the RPG. <laughs> the RPG. <from> <laughs> right. Well, if you want to join a real club, the Shooter Club, well, I'm just saying, not only have you got Shooter Sean who's going to win some random belt tonight, but they've also got the winner of the Batalla Real and soon to be the world's heavyweight champion. So if you want to run with the in crowd when you come back, I'm just saying, you know, it could make for a big lineup. We've got TV champion. Batalla Royale winner and world heavyweight champion, the host of Lucha Mania, and a guy who owns a bunch of RPGs. It could be one hell of a lineup, is all I'm saying. So, <laughs> just in the background, <laughs> just, like it just says boom, boom, <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, and then in the first semi final, Kirk Jameson defeats La Sombra. Bullseye. Bullseye. And then El Souk defeats El Mitico. Like bros. Then this happens, um, which is the tag team championships are defended by the Sea Monsters. The Swamp Monsters did it. <laughs> You're bringing that an ring performance of 100. <laughs> Holy shit, he's so good. <laughs> he's fucking ridiculous. And apparently afterwards, Mass Lightning got a promo because I thought that the tag team match was supposed to be after the intermission. <laughs> so we'll just ignore this. Oh my. Fast Navarro is inducted into the South of the Border Hall of Fame. Hey. 24 year veteran, master of the fast count, the biggest Rudo ref good. in all of pro wrestling. But say, not a very good ref, all in all. And he will be me- refereeing our main event this evening. There's no guarantee of that, but okay. <laughs> and then the Sea Monsters are talking backstage about how they're not- Actually, it's your problem. It's your problem. Yep. Uh, Jormungan walks out and he says, Arg, larg, 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 larg. In the background, Labu starts fumbling around with some with some drinks. He opens up a bottle of champagne and starts just <laughs> chugging it down. Jormungan turns around, Arg, larg, 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 And Labu goes, Larg, 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 larg. And the subtitles say, What are you doing? And the other guy says, Drinking. And Jormungan <laughs> says, Stop. And Labu says, Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so a local celebrity plays a musical number. Is it me? No, no. it's probably you. <laughs> Neither of us are local celebrities. It's an actual real-life person. You are also a musician, though. That is true, actually. I get my band. Jericho. <laughs> I get my band to play. <laughs> Posy again. Posy, man. Uh, and then Joey Minnesota welcomes us back from the intermission and says it is time for the proper show to begin. I hope you all enjoyed the pre-show. Um, it is now time for the real matches. We have the final of the Lucha Mania Championship number one contenders tournament. Al Sukio taking on Kirk Jameson. Wouldn't it be Susio? Wouldn't it be Susio? We also have the television championship match. Right. <laughs> Shooter Sean Dealey challenging La Peacemaker. 
and the main event of the evening. Three ways, one fall to the finish, balls count anywhere for the World Heavyweight Championship. Icon, legend, the undisputed World's Heavyweight Champion, Champagne Lover, defending against the Golden Luchador, the man with the most expensive cutter in all of professional wrestling, Multimillionario, and the winner of the Batalla Real, and former three-time World Tag Team Champion, as well as two-time World Heavyweight Champion in America, El Put. 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 Put, Put. Kirk Jamison becomes the number one contender. Kirk's running around Kirk and everyone. <laughs> Terrible. He cuts a promo. What does he say about being the number one contender? I'm going to the promised land. It is I. Apparently, this is what Kirk Jameson <laughs> sounds like, everybody. I don't I'm pretty sure I'm from New York, but I what accent is this even? Help me. <laughs> <laughs> and we begin hyping. For the first of our co-main events. La Peacemaker. Cuts a promo. Or does he? Or is this something else? Some sort of angle? This is this is this is the promo. Okay. This is the promo and then it'll be Yeah. Um So Peacemaker addresses Sean Dealey. He says, Sean, I've heard you've been making deals, Dealey. I heard you've been running around with some boys. Some good old boys. Good old boy. <laughs> like Boom Boom Jamaica. <laughs> you, you've got uh, you've got blood on your hand, Sean. Maybe not you specifically, but those you associate with. And I have a reminder for you. I've got one hole. <laughs> Someone shouts from the crowd, Is that the hole you were buried alive in? Sure, we'll go with that. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to put you in it. And I'm going to seal you up. Oh. With all your sins. Oh. And then, oh. I'm coming for all your little buddies. Oh. Does, and that, then, include, does that include El Pud? I'm coming for the cartel. <laughs> oh boy! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Oh, Jesus! Shooter Sean's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> No one ever said anything about the cartel, all right? I'm just down here in Mexico. I like my drugs. I like my firearms. I like my titles. And tonight, I'm getting all three, motherfucker. <laughs> and then he comes out. And then we have a video package. We're in the desert. Oh, shit. And it's the peacemaker. Oh, man. He's just standing there. I see. He's just standing. And like there's there's weird video effects from like that. There's weird like zoom and like strobe effects. And then suddenly, like from the camera's perspective, fucking pistol raises and shoots the peacemaker. <laughs> what? Bang. Does he fall into the ground drops. or into a hole? He does. He falls right into a hole. Into a dug grave? Into a dug grave filled with water. Water? With water. <gasps> But it's That's a desert. It okay. is. Jesus, where's That's that water come from? Maybe the water is metaphorical. Maybe it is. That's crazy. <laughs> What's the entrance like? The entrance. Insane. There's a hole in the middle of the stage. Oh my god. That's the and hole from, from the it. desert. Well, is it? Is it? It's from the hole. It doesn't appear to be water. Huh? There's this red pulsing light coming from the hole. Oh no! There's this. There's this. Visceral fucking scream coming from the hole. And all of a sudden, one hand, with a with a fistful of a million dollars from when he got buried alive, go. Because he went back to hell to get his money. Um. Pulls himself out of the grave and. Oh my god, it's the Peacemaker. But it's not its not the same Peacemaker. There's something different. The mask looks a little bit different. Is it Demon Peacemaker? It's not Demon Peacemaker. Is it's it the Fiend mask. Pacemaker? It's just a different mask. Is it the Pacemaker? <laughs> the Pacemaker? <laughs> okay. He crawls out of the hole, and just as he... The 
whole Oh, you're cutting out a little bit. You either need to talk louder or you need to cut your sensitivity. Uh, I don't want to do either. Cut your sensitivity. The hole cut behind him. The hole behind him seals up. Ooh. Just seals up. Fucking ground fucking converges in on itself. Because I have magical Bray Wyatt powers. And now I also control the earth. Because I'm the peacemaker. I do what I want, damn it. And suddenly, so I'm, so I'm walking towards the ring. Do I want to do this or not? Do I want to do this or not? Fuck it, man. Oh, nope, I'm saving it. Fuck that. Is it time for the television championship match? Do I want to do it or not? No, I should save it. I should save it. Just, yep. La Peacemaker yep. takes off his desert Fuck. cowboy cap and stares directly into the soul of Shooter Sean D. Lee as the ring as the ring posts explode into flames. And Shooter Sean's like, the fuck is this? I did not sign up for this shit. Holy shit. And his eyes roll back in the back of his head and it is time. It is time for our first of our co-main events of the evening. Uh, two straight falls. That's kind of fucked up, but okay. We can. Ch- I mean, we can change it if you want. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't. Matter. No, no, it's okay, bro. Here. You I can... also demand that seated stretch armbar. Yeah. Is now known as the mob ties. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> mob twos. <laughs> mob twos. So what happens in this match, Tucker? What went wrong for the Peacemaker? Shooter Sean is out of it as soon as the match starts. The bell rings and he's like going crazy. He has no idea what the fuck is going on. He's out of his game, out of his element completely. He's getting better at his gimmick though. (laughs) We're like, yeah, it looks good. And he just looks at you and he calms himself and then he shoots two imaginary gun pistols at you. Bang, bang. I just shake my head. Yeah. I just fucking charge him in the corner. Also, we didn't switch my finish ever, but that's the okay. best striker I in all. I didn't use it in this match. The best striker in all of professional wrestling. The peacemaker. So here's what happens. Match starts. I just instantly fucking grab him, and I'm going for the fucking Tombstone Destroyer. Mm-hmm. Which, if you don't know, the Tombstone Destroyer is my new finisher. Everybody, uh, it's a Tombstone pile driver, but with a flip. You got to keep the Canadian Destroyer in there. Such a fucking crazy fucking move. So as I'm going for it, though, I go for the flip. And, um, what's the best way to describe this? Sean over-rotates it Mm -hmm. and lands on his own back. Fucking grips my ankle one way and fucking breaks my ankle within the first two minutes of the match. I don't know if... I don't know if you're intending to write yourself off TV for a while, but I think that would take you off TV for a while. I'm a fucking supernatural demon, Oh, okay, buddy. yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, go on. I do what I want. Are you going to be repairing your ankle at some point in this match? <laughs> Fuck yeah, I do. I do, like, the one cool spot from that Kane feud where he just stomps his leg back in place. Or... Also, I don't know what I was typing there, but whatever. I, I just did a Google search, and I forget what I was trying to look for, but one of the suggestions was bread maker, and that needs to be one of your later gimmicks. Yup. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so he breaks your ankle. Somehow. Yeah, and the entire match then, is so, did you say somehow? Well, it's really easy. Okay, oh, so, see. imagine like an ankle lock, but he's got his, uh like, kind of arm wrapped around the base of the elbow, and he literally just pulls the ankle just fucking you need to cut pops. your sensitivity bro i don't want to just do it Ugh. i don't fucking want to it doesn't sound why you're so iffy about it it doesn't matter dude i don't know i just don't like it okay anyways so arms wrapped around one side boom the ankle fucking pops so then immediately boom the, the momentum is immediately shifting to dealy's perspective the entire match is is worked around the ankle the idea that the peacemaker, without a solid base, he can't throw his devastating, devastating strikes. Until eventually, he's kind of forced to, and they're not that effective. And it's very obvious that Shushan's kind of playing into this. He's kind of, you know, taking some strikes in, because realistically, they're not that powerful. You know what I mean? He doesn't have a solid base for it. Um, any cool spots I want to do? 
uh, let's do what's a good one. Let's do a choke slam onto the apron. That sounds that sounds fun. Um, finish the match. So Shooter Sean's worked over the ankle this entire match, and so the Peacemaker goes to uh, throw one of his punches there, or whatever. And it's it's obviously slower, right? Because he can't set himself as well. He doesn't have that speed, that 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 viciousness that he normally has on it. And so what uh, Shooter Sean's in the corner, and so what he does is he ducks to one side, grabs the arm up on his shoulder, kind of propels himself up onto the uh, the second rope, jumps over, brings the arm across, and then kind of applies a reverse Fujiwara, if that makes any sense, and bends the arm around. And the Peacemaker taps. And you said that was the finish of the match. That is the finish, yeah. Did you ever describe the first fall? I don't remember. Yeah, it's the ankle. Ah, what was your fall? I didn't get a fall. Oh, okay. All right, Tucker. I want you to break down this main event. El Putt. Oh, fuck. Champagne you know lover, I don't have anything multi for you, you already knew I had nothing for that first match. Why the fuck would you make me do that? No, no, I don't mean the in-rings. I just want you to break down, like, what's going into it. I want you to break down, like... Oh, like, thank God. Yeah. The predictions, like, like what this is entire... each, How do these guys match up? So this entire feud here has clearly been about El Pud and Champagne Lover, but of course Multimillionario is constantly in the back of the mind of both. Um, El Pud and Multimillionario, especially with the future uh, plans, it seems, of Shooter Sean Dealey, uh, they will at some point in the future be interacting a lot further. So that's something that you've got to keep in mind, that those two probably... And of course they fought inside a barbed wire steel cage only a month ago, only two weeks that's, ago. That's true. I have very selective memory. I don't remember things I don't care about. Um, <laughs> got, him. <laughs> got him. Um, but yeah, no, Champagne Lovers. Uh, the real interesting dynamic here is that all these guys, in a different capacity, have something against one another. And in a Falls Count Anywhere match, a match that can only end by pinfall and submission, that very much lends itself to becoming quite volatile quite quickly. And so we're going to see tonight uh, not only who walks out champion, but who walks out, period. Uh, both. All three of these guys, that is, um, all have a pension for violence, uh, especially now the champagne lover is clearly drunk. Um, you know what I mean? His, uh, his, his, he's, he's got to protect the, the, the supermodel looks since he's going to do a movie. Uh, he'll do anything to walk out with that championship. Uh, El Putt, of course, uh, has never been to the mountaintop before. This is his first uh, south of the border uh, Lucha Mania main event. Uh, and so he's obviously looking to win that world title, the winner of the Battle Royale. Battle uh, Royale. Close enough. And Multimillionario, he's been there. And what happens once you've been there, and you've been there as many times as Multimillionario has, you want to get it back. And you'll do anything to get it back. And that's a man who we've seen before has absolutely no problems taking shortcuts to get what he wants or get what he needs. He feels he needs. And so tonight... Ultimately, it's coming down to not who wants it more, but who plans more. In mm. a match with three different men, you're looking you're looking for more things than you are in a match with all in a one. A one on one, you know what's happening constantly. In a triple threat, there are things happening outside your field of view. You could be hurt, you could be taking a break, whatever. And so it's up to the person ultimately who's trying to be victorious to find those opportunities and to cash in on those opportunities. So before I ask you about two specific things, I want your your flat out prediction, who's winning this match and I want the prediction from chat. Who's winning ah, this champagne match? Champagne Lover. He's the best we've ever seen, man. He's going to Hollywood. He's taking the belt. He's wearing it on set. He's getting more eyes on this product. Okay, so I'll ask you about two specific things. Do you think because this is a one fall to the finish match, that favors Champagne Lover because he spent so much time north of the border over the last few years. Where Interestingly enough, common. I think it only disadvantages one man. If you remember, El Pud's been many different places before as well. Multimillionario has stuck here, and he is a lifer here, and we definitely appreciate that. But ultimately, when you think two out of three falls versus one fall to a finish, that's a very different mindset. 
you're no longer thinking about managing pain. You're no longer thinking about, you know, what's worth one fall. You know what I mean? What is one fall when ultimately you could get to any single maneuver is the end of your night, the end of the match, the end of your title reign, possibly if you're champagne lover. Mm -hmm. Second thing, we've been seeing a lot of the million dollar cutter. Do you think this is going to have any play in this match at all? It seems like a devastating maneuver, and it's got so much behind it. It's worth a million dollars, Tucker. Every single it one does. of them. It's a big move, and it's one that I'm not sure El Potter Champagne Lover have ever seen before. It's, they don't uh, watch the product, a, from what I hear. Yes, it's a different <laughs> technique. It's uh, it's it's a slightly it's the most unique cutter I've ever seen. Um, Mainly because he has to pay out a million dollars afterwards. Well, yes, but also because it's from the top fucking rope. That's true. Um, I, there, there's obviously a decent setup to that move. You know what I mean? He's got to find a way to get that guy up there, whether he's conscious or not. You know what I mean? Oh, no, maybe no. fighting back, maybe not. The, the, t the target isn't up there with him. He jumps off the top rope and hits a cutter on an opponent who's down there. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking hype as shit. <laughs> That's a lucha cutter. <laughs> Even then, he's got to go up there. Yeah. And you know what happens when you go up there? You put yourself at risk. Oh, yeah. And when you're focused on one target, there's another target somewhere. And wherever he is, maybe mm. you're not totally sure. And that, at the end of the day, could cost Multimillionario the entire match. And so it's a big, high-risk move, especially in the situation where it's <sighs> one fall to a finish with three men in the match. Well, let's get to it. Tucker says it's Champagne Lover's Night. The audience thinks it's Al Pud's night. Let's find out. Night. <laughs> Some people think it's Rocher's night. Lover makes his entrance. His return to south of the border. Pro wrestling. You know what happens? What happens? Limo pulls up onto the stage. Mm. Door opens, and out from the door, a red carpet rolls out. And suddenly, the stage is flocked by all these people. W with cameras. Or I guess... Whatever the fuck technology we're using to take photos in 2026. And Three, 360 view cameras. <laughs> in a pure white suit with white gloves. Champagne lover. He's got his belt around one shoulder. He's got sunglasses on. He's he's walking down or whatever. He signs autographs. Kisses the, babies. Fans. I'm not sure he's kissing babies. He might. He, he he's too. He's too good. For he gets that. up on the turnbuckle, Baby slings Parker. the belt behind him, just soaks it in. He hasn't been in a lucha mania in ten years. He goes to all four turnbuckles and just soaks it in. Fucking confetti starts raining down <laughs> from the sky. The best there has ever been. Eight times. I'm almost certain there is a there is a multi millenario promo, but just in case there is not, we're not going to continue. <laughs> so until until afterwards. So I make my entrance. It's serious time. I am laser focused. There's no praising to the fans, pretending I am champagne lover, pretending I'm the franchise or I'm the icon. This is my night, and I've only one thing in mind. I walk into the ring. I look at that belt that now Fast Navarro is holding. I look up at champagne. And I just nod. It's time. And then Multimillionario comes out, and he's not a, it's not as flash an entrance as last year. He's a bit more focused. He doesn't have the limo like he did last year. He just comes out, flanked by the by the board of directors with their trios titles, and he says, boys... He's got bodyguards. Yeah. Bodyguards in his mask. <laughs> yes. And he says to the board of directors, listen, you've already had your chance tonight. Good job, boys. Head to the back. Enjoy your dividends. I got this. And he comes out on his own. The golden luchador. This. He comes to the ring. And the match begins. And instantly, M Milanario just kicks El Putt in the dick. Just like he did to Gino last year. Except this time, it's not about getting an advantage. It's not about getting one so over. Good. He throws El Putt over the top rope. And he points at Champagne Lover. And he says, you! And it's time to refuel the greatest rivalry in all of Lucha Libre. It is Lucha Libre Capitalism versus Lucha Libre Socialism. One-on-one -on -one with the Great One for the World's Heavyweight Championship. And Milanario, the first thing he does, he hits a snap. Hurricane Rana. And gets a two-count. And he just points at Champagne Lover and says, I got you. 
I got you. I'm the guy now. All you've been away in the US making movies. I'm the franchise. I've made more money than you have in the last 10 years. And that's impressive. And they just stare each other down as Elpad just sells on the outside. <laughs> She's like, ow, ow, my dick. Why'd you ow. have to kick me in the dick? Why is it always <laughs> gotta be the guess. dick? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Gino told me about the whole dick thing, but I didn't think he'd actually do it. <laughs> and then they just throw punches. It's a brawl. There's no more Lucha Libre between these two. It is violent. Many revolutions have taken place over the over the differences these two men have. But they're going to settle it in the ring tonight over the greatest prize in all of sports entertainment. The World's Heavyweight Championship. But it looks like Champagne Lover is getting the upper hand. He is the better luchador after all. He's the best to ever do it. He's the best to ever lace those Lucha Libre boots. And he fights back into the match. And he fights back into the match. And of course, this is only one fall to a finish. He's getting close. He's getting there. The Champagne Sunrise. He hits it. And then, El Pud breaks up the pin. And El Pud is, is, is on fire. He's got fire in his heart. He hasn't been in this match for the first, like, five minutes. And he's punching Champagne Lover. And he's like, no, I should be in this match. It's my match. It's mine. And then Joey, not Joey Minnesota, because he's not part of that team anymore. And then Paul, Frantic Alley, and Tom Gilmore hit the ring. They were told to head to the back, but they don't give a shit. And they start beating up on El Pud. They start hit, getting outside the ring, and it leaves Milanario one on one with Champagne Lover again. And the and the the feud of a century can be reignited. It's Lover versus Milanario, and they go f and they face each other again, and they brawl to the outside. They brawl up into the Raptors. They hit a bunch of moves on the steel railings. Uh, the the golden luchador is now a golden uh, a cherry blonde the gold mixed with the crimson mask of uh, of blood pouring over his face and he just screams at him he says I hate you champagne lover I hate everything about you and then he just starts ripping at him clawing at his eyes doesn't care clawing at his eyes like he had a mask like he's trying to rip off the mask of champagne lover but he doesn't have a mask he's trying to rip off that fake bullshit he puts on that mask of American pro wrestling but he doesn't have one so he's just ripping his skin he's just scratching at his eyes he hates him and they get back to the ring even though it's false count anywhere they, they like the ring the ring has ropes and stuff to do Lucha Libre moves off of and it looks like <laughs> finally El Pud is starting to get a little bit of an upper hand over the board of directors. The Shooter Club is nowhere to be seen. No Doc Minnesota. There's no Shooter Sean Dealey. There ain't no Boom Boom Minnesota here. Uh, <laughs> boom Boom Jamaica. I mean, here. But Champagne Lover is getting the upper hand again. And just as he reverses the million dollar cutter into another Champagne Sunrise, the hool of the board of directors just ignores Pud and breaks up the pin. And then... Um, Tom Gilmore gets a Singapore cane and just starts beating the shit out of Champagne Lover. The focus is turned. Putty's exhausted. The focus is turned to Champagne Lover and they chase him up into the Raptors. Champagne up in the Raptors getting beaten down by the board of directors and suddenly bruised and battered clawing his way up onto the apron, clawing his way into the ring. Putty sees the opportunity. El Pud sees that Milanario is in trouble. The crimson mask over his face. He's done. But he clears off the announcer's table. He puts Milanario onto the announcer's table and he climbs to the top rope. And he looks around and he points at the Lucha Mania sign and he makes a motion to his waist. And Putty goes for the flying headbutt and it gets countered into the million dollar cutter through the announcer's table. Crawls to the cover. One, two, three. Milanario has done it again. You that's the peacemaker. Name. That's that's Milanario. Oh, I did forget an angle. There's a very you important did. angle that happened before this match. You didn't even, you didn't even try to work it in. I, 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 I had the... I, finally, I just completely forgot it. We're, we're finding. What was before the match? Before the match, we, we randomly cut to, uh, to like a... Like a water thing or something like that it very clearly all of a sudden says gulf of mexico on the on a sign somewhere very conveniently placed suddenly like a car pulls up and somebody gets out and they're limping and they're, their one arm's kind of just hanging <laughs> pull a phone and say like, i was never fucking good with my left hand and they put the phone up to their ear they're looking out at the gulf of mexico and we, we can't really see who it is 
somebody. They're not wearing a mask. Um, it's from a distance. And it's... Hey, uh... Fuck. I, I, I don't know if you saw what happened tonight. I mean, you don't... You don't watch any of this, I guess, at all. Um... I've ever told you I've seen some shit. Like, I mean, going back and forth between hell and earth, supposedly, is pretty, pretty fucked up. Um, I think, I think the cartel might be coming after me. I might have said something about that earlier. Um, but I've, I've had to think. I think right now I just want to feel the water. I think... I think the best thing for me to do right now is go swimming. Maybe... Maybe call me back if... Call me back if you don't want me to go swimming. When we flash forward... About an hour later... Back to that fateful moment... When Elpad saw an opportunity. He's looking out to the cleared announcer's tables. He's pushing a multi, multi millenario onto the announcer's table. And he's climbing, exhausted, to the top rope. It's his moment. And he looks down to the turnbuckle underneath, on the ring. You know, in the corner where he usually keeps some stuff. And he's got his phone there and it's ringing. And he picks it up and he looks at the, you know, the number. And then he looks at millenario. And then he looks at the number. And then he looks at Milanario, and you can see the conflict in his face. His hand begins shaking. And then he puts the phone down. And he gets to the top rope. And he goes for the headbutt, and he gets caught. Million dollar cutter through the table. Not like this. One, two, three. Milanario has reached the mountaintop again. The second year in a row, there is no one else left standing. Milanario is the heavyweight champion of the world. The past and the future beaten. The present stands tall. People really yep. like their local celebrities. They really do, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they, that's, they do. That's, the, that's the big draw. That was the big yeah. draw of the show, for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope you've enjoyed Lucha Mania as much as Tucker's dogs. I hope... Yeah, dude, they're they're hype as fuck. They're hype as fuck. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Come watch the stream over at twitch.tv slash Mansudaira, where you can use your Prime. We're only two subs away from another emote. And, uh, yeah, hope that we can get this done by the time TW 2020 comes out. Um, considering neither of us have won the world belt in this promotion yet, we are looking interesting. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's hope for the best. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys next time.